One Piece chapter 981. Now, this was a very good chapter. A lot of progression from all sides and parties, from the Flying Six to the Straw Hats and the Samurai. And very interesting key points that has been kind of foreshadowed, and it's going to be interesting to see where these plot points go to. Again, which I will go more in depth later in this video. But this chapter definitely had the pre time skip vibe to it. Everything felt so natural, nothing was really forced. It was just classic One Piece, right? But before I go deeper, let's start from the beginning. Now, chapter starts off where we left off with Kate attacking Apu and we get a conversation between these two and one that sort of highlights Apu's character even more and here Kid states that Apu joining the Air Alliance was a ploy and that he was working with Kaido long before the Alliance right uh, which was something that we figured out but something I do find interesting is that Apu takes the more realistic approach when it comes to Yonko right because he also believed that taking down one Yonko was impossible even with the Alliance and to be honest honest Apu is kind of right like apart from another Yonko or the Marines being involved it's very unlikely that an alliance composed of two or three members of the worst generation can take down a Yonko and based on Apu's words it looks like he was probably defeated at some point or maybe at a certain point he realized that going up against a Yonko is not worth it because you know he's not si he's simply not strong enough to oppose a force that has been ruling the new world for years uh, we know that he went for Big Mom at a certain point and perhaps he got defeated by someone in Kaido's crew or one of the Calamities and after that his new crew sort of assimilated into the Beast Pirates. Or maybe he knew that he couldn't oppose the Yonkos forever because he finally recognized that these people are actually the kings of the new world. Because Apu even mentions that he's surprised that Kid is still alive and I guess he's probably heard about Kid attacking the Big Mom Pirates and such and such. So for him, opposing the Yonkos seems to be an impossible task. So very interesting stuff here about Apu, uh, just based on his interaction with Kid, I feel like there's more to his personality. And even his brief scuffle with Kid was great, with both of them trash talking. Um, that really takes you back to the scene in Sabodi where uh, they were both uh, initially introduced. I don't know, I think I like Apu a little bit more now. Uh, this interaction was definitely great to see. And we also learn more things about Apu's devil fruit and sort of its limitations and how the sound waves work as stated by Killer. Now, Apu's devil fruit can only affect affect you if you can hear his sounds and that if you can hear them you cannot avoid them and this gives more clarity as the events of the last chapter with luffy and zoro uh, even though they were on guard they couldn't do anything even if luffy used future sight it seems that the result would have still been the same but this honestly makes apu's devil fruit really frightening because it seems that these attacks do damage to a person from the inside and it's not necessarily an external force right and by that i mean that apu isn't really externally affecting the person but more so internally because killer also mentions that this can be avoided by simply closing off your ears so you hearing the noise is very important as to how one can get affected by his devil fruit and that is pretty hacks when you think about it if you have no intel on his devil fruit a pool can defeat a lot of people by surprise because it's an ability that has an element of surprise so again thinking back to the events of the previous chapter i'm not exactly mad at luffy and or for taking those hits like they did because some of these devil fruits are really overpowered if you don't know how they work so very interesting insight on the poo's devil fruit hopefully we get more um stuff about it later on but definitely interesting stuff here uh something that i also liked in this chapter was killer's um showings or sort of portrayal in this chapter now we knew killer was sort of the brains of the kid pirates but in this chapter you definitely get to see more of it and it sort of highlights the difference between him zoro luffy and kid because zoro luffy and kid are pretty much doing the same thing for the most part but killer seems to be more level-headed and is a bit more observant than the others and here it was revealed that he did eat a bad smile uh, which came at the condition that he would have a chance to save kid so killer pretty much ate a smile because he was trying to save kid again showing a lot more loyalty from his part um, that most of the right hands do show so very interesting details about how that came to be hopefully we get more as to how it happened uh, because if you guys remember kid was the only one that seemingly got captured and was put in udon a uh, killer and kids crew were not present there at that point so i think there's probably more to that and obviously killer was 
you know, working as Orochi's um, assassin at that point as um, Kamazo. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Now we also get a non silhouette number. And again, just like the silhouettes that we saw beforehand, they just seem to be giants with horns, which again could tie into whatever Kaido's race is because they seem to be inhabitants of Onigashima. But in terms of my expectations of the numbers, I'm not really expecting uh, much from these guys because for the most part, giants in the series, uh, throughout the course of the entire series, uh, they haven't been that all that great. So in terms of combat ability, I'm, you know, it's not going to be high up there, right? Uh, so I don't think the Alliance would be worried about them. But then again, because of their size, it might take someone like Sicilian to take them out, right? Or Carrot or someone of that mid-tier level. However, there might be an exception where uh, maybe one or two of them are pretty strong. Uh, I could see that happening. But overall, I don't think it's going to be anything special. If anything, I think they will serve as lore to give us more information about this horned race of giants and perhaps about more details about the skull that is um the giant skull on onigashima maybe that's one of their um ancestors right now we also get to see the flying six in this chapter specifically page one obviously he hears news about luffy and company making a commotion now instead of going after luffy and the others he still prioritizes yamato and basically tells his subordinates to find more information on yamato right and again there seems to be an underlying plot line here with the flying six and the calamities because because it seems that there's a personal grudge between some of these guys and again if you go back to the chapter when who's who was um, introduced with the other flying six the first person that he talked about was queen so there might be some history between these two and queen also says that he wants to take out some of the flying six as well but we don't necessarily know if that's who's who it honestly might be drake because maybe he suspects drake of something and, and that would definitely make the plot a lot more interesting because if drake is found out he might be forced to start mobilizing in the marines and that could tie into how the marines get involved in this arc now we know that they were going to get involved somehow based on a kind of conversation with sengoku but the question was really when and how that was going to happen uh someone finding out about x drake could easily segue into that and we also know that x drake has some conditions with law or some sort of plan so i'm very interested as to what that is um x drake is easily one of the more interesting characters in this entire thing because he seems to be super low-key so very interesting and stuff here now we then move on to big mom and what she has going on and here it's revealed that she finally made contact with the big mom pirates who are still in the shores of wano which is weird because it seems like they've been there for a few days now and a few chapters ago it was sort of hinted towards them being already in onigashima so i was of the assumption that they were already with big mom at that point while queen was doing the whole introduction of every faction that was present at that time point and he did mention that you know the big mom pirates but again it seems that perisparo smoothie and the others are still at the waterfall waiting but then again we do know that the beast pirates have like security cameras at the shore and if they start climbing the waterfall they would just alert king and the same thing would happen again because king just has so much leverage when he's in the air uh with his devil fruit so i could see it from that perspective but if katakuri was here that wouldn't happen or i think that wouldn't happen now before we talk about the end of this chapter uh we also get to see sanji and kinemon's group and they ended up in black maria's stronghold which happens to be a brothel and of course knowing that you know sanji couldn't contain himself and went right in and obviously he was disappointed because the brothel was empty and the reason why it was empty was because they hear news about the commotion that luffy was making uh, which gave kinemon and company leverage to pass without being detected but to their surprise someone was still there and that someone was big mom and then we just had this moment of chopper and big mom having a stare down uh this was a funny moment i'm not gonna lie now where this is leading towards specifically i'm not sure but we know chopper and big mom met in the beginning of act two so maybe oda is gonna play with that plot line even more i'm not sure but then again big mom is in her right state of mind so it is weird uh she might actually view chopper as a friend because her memories might be like jumbled up because chopper did help her uh during act two so again it was a funny moment uh sanji and chopper and the the entire samurai squad i'm not sure where this is going but i'm definitely looking forward to it and finally we move on to the big mom pirates and again from the looks of it they are still stationed near the waterfall for seemingly for a couple of days now but given that big mom is now in an alliance with kaido they were probably given permission to enter wano and just before they were about to land marco comes in clutch 
and pretty much does the same thing that king did to the big mom pirates earlier in this arc and that could parallel as to why king and marco might actually fight both first mates and both have flying zone devil fruits marco versus king is definitely a possibility um the zoro fanboys are not gonna like this but having marco back in the game i am definitely excited having someone of prominence like marco in the alliance is actually kind of insane when you think about it because you know what he brings to the table uh, we also get to see neko and obviously the other person highly hinted to be izo um i think it is izo so we're probably going to get a meeting between okiku and izo uh but overall this was a very enjoyable chapter i actually had fun reading this chapter uh we had it all um character interactions interesting plot lines progression a little foreshadowing here and there and of course the return of marco the phoenix uh this chapter had everything um hype it was just it was just a great chapter but again just my quick thoughts on the chapter um comment down below what you guys think like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more one piece content it is pharaoh and i will see you folks later peace